Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Dog King Burnt Bun Breakfast, an original story written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Dog King, he's the king of the dogs. 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 His mother was a dog, his father was a king, so now he's Dog King, and he's king of the dogs. Dog King, his bite is worse than his bark. Dog King, because he bites like a shark. Dog King, you know he's ruling the streets. Dog King, he won't roll over for treats. His mother was a dog, his father was a king, so now he's Dog King, and he's king of the dogs. Dog-ing. Today we find Dog King, King of the Dogs, sitting on his throne, gazing out at his kingdom. Out in the streets, the sun was hot and humid as a pool of drool, and the roads were scorched enough to scald a paw. Humans were bustling around, head down, headed to work, and traffic clogged up all the best walking spots. That was all okay, though because the kingdom, the alley behind the laundromat, was shady and cool as the dirt under a deck. And more than that, it was a summer Monday, which could only mean one thing. Time for a burnt bun breakfast, Dog King called, spilling two heavy trash bags into the crowd of waiting dogs. From the bag's wrinkly, crinkly sides, Burnt hot dogs and hamburgers and stale buns spilled onto the dirty ground. It was kind of like Christmas, if Christmas smelled like ketchup and mustard and day-old meat. Burnt bun breakfast was their summer Monday tradition, where the dogs gathered all the burnt barbecue thrown out from the weekend before and had themselves a feast. A whole mess of mutts had shown up for this one. There was the usual crew of Pickles and Rambo and Annie, plus some lounging labs, hungry hounds, a beefy boxer, a boxy beefer, and a group of rowdy terriers fresh from a run at the dog park. Ah, burnt bun breakfast, you're the best fist, crooned Pickles the chihuahua. He leapt from his little pink bike basket bed and shook himself awake. Nothing like a good charred burger ah, with the extra black bits for flavor. Ah, you don't see these every day. Ah. I see these literally every day, said Rambo. My mom likes to grill all the time, and I get all the ones she messes up. I think sometimes she messes up on purpose because I'm her special handsome boy. No way, said Pickles. Yes way. I'm totally her special handsome boy. She tells me all the time. Oh, it's just not fair, said Pickles. I'm not even allowed at my owner's cookouts anymore. Oh, so I never get any of it. Oh, I swear, you bite a few guests' kids and all of a sudden you're public enemy number one. Those kids had sticky ice cream fingers. Ice cream! And they come and try to pet me with their little sugar sausages and then I'm the bad guy if I want one little taste. Oh! Rough break, dude, said Luke the Golden Doodle. I love a good cookout. Nothing beats working up a good burger sweat and then taking a cannonball into the pool. Daddy! Daddy! Pickles went on, not listening. The little dog bit me! Well, maybe you wouldn't have gotten bit if you didn't frost yourself like a donut first. Ah! You never think about that. Sweet Georgia Brown! No one talks about the ice cream fingers! No one! Ah! Pickles started to shake, and Dog King passed him a burnt burger puck to calm him down. Tough break for the little nipper, Rambo said. I've eaten so many burnt ones, I'm probably half hot dog at this point. Well, I'm all hot dog, said Broadwin the St. Bernard, trudging in from the street. Sugars, it's warm enough out there to bake my biscuits, boil my broth, and butter my bread all at the same time. Sounds delicious, said Rambo. Come eat, Broadwin, Dog King said. The burnt burgers are crunchy, and the hot dogs are mushy, just like you like. We have plenty to share. Broadwin dug in 
And soon the alley was filled with munches and crunches and snarfs and snoofs and burps and belches. The mountain of meat shrunk to a molehill and then to a scattered, shattered pile. I can't take another bite, said Dexter the bulldog. He had eaten so much he was like a beach ball on his back, legs in the air. Someone roll me home. No, wait, roll me into the grass. The other dogs were in similar shape, except for Rambo and Pickles. The little chihuahua ate slowly, savoring every bit and bite of burger, and the pit bull swallowed hot dogs whole, seeming to have a stomach the size of a doghouse. Finally, Rambo ate his last burger and then turned to Pickles' pile. The little dog still had a few hot dogs and one giant beefy burger left. Hey, Pickles, Rambo said. Give me some of that. I'm still hungry. Ah, no way, Jose, Pickles said. This is mine. You already ate all yours. Come on. That beefy burger is way too big for you. Look, it's bigger than your whole body. No way. Sure, I may wear a baby size extra, extra small, but I have the stomach of a champion. Oh, my great aunt Norman was once the hot dog champion of Coney Island. Oh, well, the dumpster's out behind Coney Island, but that was where the real champions played. Hey, Kibble Breath, I want a burger, not your life story. Rambo, that food belongs to Pickles, said Dog King. You know you already ate your share, and you got more than Pickles, since you're bigger. You can't take his just because he eats slow. Sure I can, said Rambo. He darted forward and clamped his jaws around the big beefy burger, and then darted away, shouting around the mouthful of meat. See? It was easy! Oh, thief! Thief! shouted Pickles. A theft in our kingdom! Oh, Dog King, call the mayor! Call the Giga City Guardians! Oh, call my mom! Rambo, come on, just give it back, said Annie. We don't steal from friends. Rambo walked to the mouth of the alley and set the burger down between his paws. Well, maybe I'd rather have a big beefy burger than friends. You ever think of that? Dude, said Luke. That's totally not cool. You know we're all best buds. I don't have to share my burgers at home, Rambo said. And I don't want to share them here. I'm going to go eat this someplace where it's a little more quiet. If I wanted to be bossed around, I wouldn't have bit that trainer. Rambo picked up the big beefy burger and started to walk away. Hey, Dog King, said Broadwin. Sugar, are you just going to let him go? He's just a little food crazy, Dog King said. He'll come to his senses soon. Oh, he better, said Pickles. Or else I'm going to have to show him who won the Chihuahua Boxing League Championship three times in a row. Oh! Boxing champion? asked Cranberry the cat, who had just arrived. She dropped from a roof to her customary place near Pickles' basket. Who was it? It was me! said Pickles. These paws are practically lethal weapons. Oh, that's the reason I never fight. I wouldn't want to accidentally hurt someone. Put them in the cone of shame. Oh. Wow, is that true? Of course it is, Dog King said, but he shook his shaggy head from side to side with a smile. A few blocks away, Rambo had found a quiet spot near the river. The grass was soft, the shade was cool, and the burger was big, beefy, and all his. Now this is where it's at, he said, rolling in a weird smell by the water. Who needs friends when you have a meal like this? Hello, burger! We can be friends! And there's someone I want to introduce you to! It's my belly! He picked up the big patty and started to chew. It was burned on the outside and cold in the middle, just the way he liked it. In the back of his mind, Rambo considered that he had been pretty mean to Pickles. After all, Dog King and the Chihuahua had helped him when another dog had stolen his fuzzy bunny toy, the one with the squeaker. They were always looking out for everyone. But no, that was up to them. 
Rambo would rather have a burger and no friends than friends and no burger. At least, that's what he thought then, with the big beef between his teeth. Then, he saw another dog across the river. It was a pit bull, like him, and it had a burger, also like him. The burger looked just as big and beefy as Rambo's, and the hungry pit bull decided that he was hungry enough for both. If he was going to have no friends anyway, he might as well have two burgers. He stomped up to the edge of the river, watching the dog across the water do the same thing. Hey, Pibble, he shouted. Give me that burger, chump. At least, that's what he wanted to shout. But when he opened his mouth, the burger dropped out and fell into the river. Rambo watched as across the water, the other dog did the same thing. And right then, far too late, Rambo realized he had been trying to bully his own reflection in the water. And now the burger was dropped, and the current was carrying it away, bobbing like a tennis ball in a pool. No, my big and beefy, Rambo cried. He leapt into the river to retrieve his burnt bun breakfast, completely and totally and 100% forgetting that he had no idea how to swim in deep water. The pit bull hit the water with a terrific splash and let out a yelp like someone had stepped on his tail. He managed to get his mouth around the big beefy burger, and then the current, whoosh rush swooshed him into a muddy little riverbank, solid ground hanging a few feet above his head. He tried to climb up, but it was so wet and slick he fell back into the water and almost got washed away. With a sudden shock, Rambo realized he was stuck. Big Beefy Burger still firmly in his mouth, he started to call out. Ah, uh, guys! Pickles! Dog King! Anyone! Help! He looked to the rushing river with wide eyes. I don't even like getting a bath! Back in the alley, Dog King and Pickles were running down the rest of their day. Well, that was a good burnt bun breakfast, Dog King said. What's next on the schedule? Ah, oh, good breakfast! Good other than Rambo being an absolute fuzzy brute, Pickles groused. Right, other than that, Dog King said. So what's next? Oh, next up, we have the 10 a.m. pee tour, said Pickles. Dude, it's too hot for a pee tour, said Luke. We can go down by the river, Dog King said. It is shady there, and there are usually fish and worms to roll in. The crowd of dogs didn't need to hear anything else. The whole barking, wagging, slobbering crowd paraded down the streets. They paused to lift legs on every plant and pole and even a few shoes, getting dirty looks from the humans all the while. Finally, they got to the river. They sprawled out in the cool grass, found weird smells to roll in, and even started wrestling around. It was all going well until a dog named Simone, who loved to swim, came running up from the river's edge like her tail was on fire. What is wrong? Dog King called. You look like you just got your temperature taken. Dog King, it's Rambo. He's in trouble. Oh, good. I hope he falls in the river. Ha! <laughs> muttered Pickles. He did fall in the river, Simone said, and he doesn't know how to swim. Oh, I was just joking. No, Rambo! Ah! Pickles started running towards the river's edge as fast as his teeny tiny legs would take him. Rambo, I didn't mean it. Rambo, don't let the river take you, my friend. Oh, you don't even like getting a bath. Ah! Dog King and the others hurried after him, and they found Rambo stuck between the river and a steep, muddy bank, shaking like he just heard fireborks exploding. Rambo, Dog King said. We're going to help you, pal. Oh, thanks, Rambo said, terrified. I don't even like getting a bath. Oh, I said that. Oh, didn't I say that? He doesn't even like baths. Oh, sweet Georgia Brown. Oh, he doesn't like baths. He always smells so bad, but he is my friend. Oh, we need to help him. Dog 
Dog King turned to Luke and Simone, two of the best fetchers to ever play the game. You too. Please go fetch the biggest stick you've ever fetched. The two nodded and ran off. Everyone else, come over here, quick. The pups came back with a long, sturdy stick. Dog King had everyone work together to slide it over the steep edge and down towards the river. Rambo, grab on and we'll all pull you up. I can't, Rambo said. Oh no, he can't, he can't grab it, oh, Pickle said. What will we do, oh? Why can't you grab it, sugar? Broadwin called down. Because I have the big beefy burger in my mouth. Oh, just drop it, you lunkhead, oh, Pickle said. Oh, oh yeah, Rambo said. A second later, he was latched on to the end of the stick. All right, everyone, Dog King said. It's time to tug of war like you've never tugged or warred in your whole fuzzy lives. On the count of three, one, blue, Saskatchewan, three. All the dogs dug in their paws and pulled like they were trying to rip the squeaker out of a stuffy toy. For a moment, they all seemed stuck in the mud, but then the stick lurched back and Rambo came sliding up and over the muddy bank. He spun and shook and rolled himself dry, excited to be back on solid ground. Thanks, everyone, Rambo said, embarrassed. I shouldn't have been so mean, Pickles. I'm sorry, buddy. Oh, well, it seems like you learned your lesson, the little chihuahua huffed. So I guess you won't have to feel my special iron paw technique. But you just keep that in mind for next time. Oh. I will, Rambo said, smiling a toothy smile. Big beefy burgers got me into trouble and my friends got me out of it. I guess I was wrong earlier. I'm sorry, everyone. You're the best. He turned to Pickles. Hey, can I talk to you for a second over here? Pickles nodded and followed Rambo over to a shady spot in the grass. Rambo rescued. The other dogs all spread out and went back to playing and pouncing and pawing. I really am sorry, little guy, Rambo said, but I did save you this. Rambo stuck out his tongue and turned his head and coughed and hacked and made a weird duck noise and eventually, ultimately, finally, spat out a drooly slab of a big and beefy burger. Sorry, I tried to save it in my mouth and I guess I swallowed it a little. But Pickles, this is yours. I shouldn't have taken it. No, you shouldn't have, Pickles said, turning up his little nose. He waited until Rambo looked sufficiently sorry, and then he peeked over at him. But since you apologized, maybe we can share it on the walk home. That sounds great, Rambo said. And both dogs started wagging their tails in a dog's version of a great big smile. I told you they would work it out, said Dog King, rolling on a nice juicy earthworm. Those silly boys, Broadwin said, dabbing at tears in her eyes. They are just finer than a frog hair split four ways. I once ate a frog. Oh, sugar, was it good? It was not. I almost croaked. You're going in the river next, said Annie, and they all laughed. Pickles and Rambo came back over, all smiles. The big beefy burger split between them. As the sun got low and the day started to cool off, they rounded up the rest of their friends and started their way home, barking and laughing and leaning on each other just because. Dog King, as always, leading the way. Dog King, he's the king of the dogs. Dog King. He's the king of the dogs, dog king. He's the king of the dogs, dog king. He's the king of the dogs. His mother was a dog, his father was a king. So now he's dog king, and he's king of the dogs, dog king. His bite is worse than his bark, dog king. Because he bites like a shark, dog king. You know he's ruling the streets, dog king. He won't roll over for treats. His mother was a dog, his father was a king, so now he's Dog King, and he's king of the dogs. Dog King!
Thanks for listening. 